clap, 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 clap. Thank you, Pastor. Clap, clap, Praise clap, the clap, Lord. clap, clap. Uh, we thank the Lord for the celebration of the GCK, the second year. I will thank the Lord for what he has done already. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and today Sunday. And I pray that the blessing of this celebration will go around, touch you, touch him, touch her, touch everyone. And I pray that even though we're having celebration, praising the Lord for what God has done, what God is doing, what God will yet do. I believe that today can be an open door, a breakthrough for you in everything we're doing and the desired blessing, the desired breakthrough and the desired progress in your life, the Lord will manifest in your life today in Jesus' name. The Lord will grant us miracles, breakthrough and grant us wonders in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we do it for others. It's done a lot for many people all these uh, 24 months. And I believe the Lord will bring everything together and put in your life in Jesus' name. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you at this time and bless your name. We thank you for the rejoicing of your people from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, today. Lord, we thank you for the blessings you have poured out. And we pray that greater blessings you will pour down upon everyone, even from this time in Jesus' name. And as we're looking back to what you have done, we're looking at what you're doing at the present time. And then in the future, we pray, Lord, every Every cup will overflow and the touch of the Lord will be upon every life. Lord, perfect everything concerning everyone. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Give me a good celebration. Amen. God bless you today. We're looking at the subject, the power of praising God from, for his mighty deeds. We have great needs. He has mighty deeds. And those mighty deeds, as God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's still doing all those things today. He will do in your life. Those on radio, those on television, and those online, and those at the Alpha location here, Bagara, Lagos, I believe that today there will be a new page, a new chapter of your life in Jesus' name. As I said, we're looking at the topic, the power of praising God for his my chidis. We're looking at Second Chronicles, and uh, this is about Jehoshaphat and about Judah. There was a great, great problem, and because they didn't know what to do, that's why they called upon the Lord. Open your Bible with me in uh, Second Chronicles chapter twenty, and I'm reading from verse one. It says, "It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab." And the children of Ammon, and the children, and of them, of the others beside the Amorites, they came against Jehoshaphat to battle. You know, sometimes battles come, difficulties come, challenges come, not of all making. There is a Satan in the world, and there are sinners in the world, and there are peculiar situations in the world. Those are the reasons why those things come so we don't begin to blame ourselves and say, maybe I've done this. Maybe I've done, maybe you've done nothing. Maybe the devil is just angry at righteous people, at the people who know the Lord, like you know the Lord, and maybe at the people who are running after God and they want the salvation of the Lord, they want the goodness of the Lord, like you want the salvation, the goodness of the Lord. Maybe that's the reason why. So don't condemn yourself. I'm so bad, I'm so evil. That's why this is coming. Maybe not. And then we're told then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee beyond Jordan, the sea, and, and, and the sea, beyond Jordan, the sea on this side, Syria. And um, behold, they be in Azazotama, which is 
engage you. You know, sometimes uh, ignorance is bliss. If there are enemies against you and you don't know about them, if there are plans and plots against you and you don't know about them, sometimes you have some really cheap peace. But when some people come to tell you, they, I have information for you. I have something to tell you. The people on this side and the people on that side see what they are planning and then they tell you their might and their strength and their enmity and everything and the thing is so great that you shiver and you tremble but then it says and you shall have feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. He wasn't going through this alone. You and I, the problems we have, we're not going through them alone. Maybe we have family members and we need to tell them. And maybe we have uh, church members, we need to tell them our leaders in the church or whoever they are that are concerned about us that are in the same problem, in the same predicament that we find ourselves so we tell them and he said Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord that's the important thing and the Lord is always there yes it is today and forever it's there for you it's there for me and it's there today for you to solve your problem and so we gather together like we're gathering together in homes and uh, in uh, communities in churches in locations for this celebration of a GCK second year celebration and we tell one another and the Lord said, If we shall ask anything of him, he will do for us. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Now, what did they tell the Lord? Look at uh, verse 12 there, what they were telling the Lord. In verse 12, they were saying, O oh Lord, O oh our God, will thou not judge? them will thou not deal with them for we have no might against this great company it was a great company great uh, enmity and great uh, power might that they had and yet even though they couldn't handle everything by themselves it says they came and do we have no might against this uh, company that cometh against us neither know we what to do but our eyes are upon thee what then did they do as i told you we're talking about the power of praising god for his mighty deeds there are three things we're looking at to tell you how they add their solution one there were problems too, thank God. There are promises and three praise the Lord. There are praises that bring marvelous uh, solutions. Number one, problems beyond man's solution. Are you confronted with anything? that brings a fear upon your heart that you panic about that you say how am i going to do this i've never seen this kind of problem number one problems beyond man's solution number two promises believed for manifold solutions we praise the lord for one thing what's that that whatever problem there is there is a promise in the word of god that matches it whatever mountain confronts you there is a miracle that matches with that uh, kind of uh, mountain and whatever enmity that may come from any man any woman any community against your life with that enmity there is an exploit by the power of the lord that will raise everything so number one we have problems number two we have promises and number six Say we have praises. You will praise the Lord. Give me a good amen. That you, even in this your condition, you, even at this day, is it concerning yourself or your child or your husband or your wife or anyone that is close to you, your loved ones? Is it concerning, uh, you know, your financial situation, your, uh, your, your health uh, situation? And whatever it is, you will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. That is at the end of this day. 
at the end of the session tonight and then in the weeks following and the months following and in our life we will yet praise the lord remember number one problems beyond man's solution number two promises believed for manifold solutions and number three praises uh, that bring uh, marvelous solution that is uh, the, the praises they act as a vehicle and the vehicle will bring the blessings unto us and the marvelous solutions to us because we praise the Lord uh, even before we see the prayer answered and before we see any manifestation physical or visible as we praise the Lord as we glorify the Lord your solution will come my solution will come praise the Lord I'm coming to number one now number one we're looking at problems beyond man's solution. When we say man's solution, even your own personal solution, you think and you plan and you are readjusting, you, you, you kind of uh, jog this and jig that and everything uh, and nothing works. Yet, we're going to have what God can do. But let me start with problems we have, problems that confront us without man's solution. I'm looking at that second Chronicles. I'm picking just one verse there. Verse 12 of this chapter 20, it says, Oh, our God, thank God we have got to call upon. Thank the Lord that he looks at us and we look at him and that is the Lord my shepherd, is the Lord my savior, is the Lord my solution giver as for me. I do not have anything I can do as for me. I do not have any solution. Yet we can say oh our God, why don't you personalize that? Oh my God wilt thou not judge them? Wilt thou not deal with this situation? Then it says for we have no might against this great company that cometh against us neither know we what to do but our eyes are upon thee it says we have we don't know what to do but our eyes are upon thee and as we look at isaiah chapter 37 and in verse 3 he expresses it in this way in isaiah chapter 37 looking at verse 3 and, and they said unto him Thus says Ezekiah, this day is a day of trouble. You hear that? A day of trouble for Ezekiah, a day of trouble. And for Jehoshaphat, a day of trouble for the children of Israel. There came a day of trouble when God came out and said, Choose a man and let him come against me. And the way he bragged and boasted, you think uh, everything was over. Then so if you check up your life, there might be a deal of trial, a day of trouble today. If you check up in anyone's life, there is no man that comes to this world without a day of trouble. In the long life, in the 78 year, 100 years that we live, a day of trouble, a day of rebuke, a day of blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth and there is no strength to bring forth the labor pain is there but the child is not coming out and all the signs you should have that i'm delivering a baby that will give me joy that will give me a kind of uh, the result i've been waiting for i've not seen anyone it says there is no strength to bring forth it was like that for i'll just tell you the story about uh, you know the apostle peter he was put in the prison and the following day and the Herod, the king, was waiting to get him out of there and get rid of him out of the earth. And it was like, what am I going to do? There's no contact. 
is, there is no counselor, there is no helper, and there is no one that can talk to her. Don't do what you are trying to do. It will not work. Nobody like that. And it was like, what am I going to do? The same thing with Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle, in chapter 27 of uh, Acts of the Apostles, it was like everything they had in the ship, they threw everything into the sea. No hope of survival. Yet, we know that God himself, who is our helper, God himself, the same yesterday, today, and forever, who will always do what he has promised to do. He was there for them. And that God is there for you. Say amen. And that God, if you have confidence, you have assurance that God is here. Even at this very hour for you. Let me tell you problems we have that we do not have any human solution. Number one, there might be battles in life beyond our capacity or strength. Problems in life, battles in life, and the wars that are waged against us as individuals that we do not have any capacity to solve and there is no strength. Maybe you've discovered something like that. The Lord will get rid of that thing even today in Jesus. Number two, we have bondage under Lucifer. You know Lucifer? That's the old serpent. That's the devil. That's the enemy, the greatest enemy, the enemy of God and man. And there are some things you have bondage under Lucifer without compassion and or sympathy. Satan, the devil, Lucifer, the old serpent, does not have a grain or I might say a drop of compassion and sympathy. Those are things that we cannot solve, but God can deal with every problem we have. Number three, we have, um, uh, we have bankruptcy and limitations with conquered a conquered spirit. There are times we just have everything is bankrupt. Personal life, business, whatever. Everything we lay hands on, this one crumbles, this, fall, this one falls, and this one fails. Everything just collapses, and we have so many limitations with a conquered spirit. It's like our spirit cannot move on. Our spirit cannot deal with anything. It's like we're giving up. No, you will not give up. Don't give up. Don't give in to that discouragement because things will turn around. Even tonight in your life in Jesus, look at number four there. Number four, brokenness in livelihood. We're broken. We're broke. We're broken. We're almost torn to pieces and with continual sorrow. In the night we cannot sleep. In the day we don't know where to go, where to turn. Because of that continual sorrow. I'm talking about problems that we ourselves, contemporary problems that we cannot deal with and that the human strength cannot turn away from us. Look at number five. Number five is bodies of loads of critical sickness. You know, sickness, sometimes, you know, people say everybody can be sick, maybe. Everybody can fail in health, maybe. But sometimes there are sicknesses that are critical, critical. You, you check up and you do, you have natural cure, nothing works. And the medical cure, nothing works. And they, you know, it's happened to somebody before and this is what they use, this is how they went through and yet nothing worked. Critical that you say, is this the end? This is not your end. The Lord will satisfy you with long life. I'm talking to you. I said long life healthy life, happy life will come in your way and will start even tonight in Jesus' name. Look at number six. Number six, barrenness and lostness without cure for the sick. Barrenness, well, in the family, We've been married for how many years now? I've prayed, I've fasted, I've done operation, I've sought, a, you know, kill, but 
no kill. And listen, it's like in the world I have lost. I cannot find my way. And everything appears dark and dreary. What am I going to do? Barrenness or lo and lostness without kill for the sea. Number seven now. Number seven, the boldness of lawlessness. You see this, uh, the enemy of uh, Jehoshaphat and the enemy of Judah, they were bold and they even blasphemed and they were lawless in everything they said. They were very sure they were going to bring Judah down. They were very sure they were going to bring Jehoshaphat down. They were very, they were very sure the history and the destiny of Jehoshaphat was going to come to an end, but your enemies will be found liars unto you. However bold they are, however injurious or wicked or cruel they are, their lawlessness will not conquer you in Jesus' name. I come to point number two now. Point number two, I'm looking at the promises. Promises believed for manifold solutions all you have to do is to believe the promise the promise may look far 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 ahead of a human experience but you know god is able god is willing god is mighty and god is merciful and there's no problem we have that god will not deal with now look at chronicles again second chronicles chapter 20 and we're reading from verse 20. second chronicles chapter 20 but here is a secret the secret of solution the secret of uh, overcoming life it says and they rose early in verse 20, in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went for Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. He said, Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall ye be established and believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. He says, All we need to do is to believe. And as we believe, then the miracle working power of God will work in our lives. You remember, for example, uh, the friend of God, we are friends of Jesus. Jesus calls us friend. He says, you are my friends. And whatsoever you ask, on the basis of the fact that you are saved, on the basis of the fact that you are a child of God, on the basis of the fact that your names are written, in heaven and if your names are not written in heaven yet today your name your very name will be written in heaven and angels will rejoice because of you it says because we're, ch we're children of god our names are written in heaven we're friends of christ and because we're friends of christ everything we ask the Lord tonight, he will grant unto us. All we need to do is believe. Look at the experience of Abraham in Romans chapter 4. And I'm reading here from verse 17. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. As it is written. I want you to take note of those words. As it is written. What comes to me? What happens to me, what comes to you, what happens to you, will be as it is written. Not as Satan planned, not as enemies planned, not as your own weak human thoughts uh, think, but as it is written. What if I live my life every day? As it is written, what I see, what if I see all my thoughts every day as it is written? What if I plant my life and I pray to the Lord? What if I held on to the promises of God as it is written? That is the secret of victory in our lives. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom. He believed. He believed. Then it said, even God who quickness the dead, even God who quickness the dead, 
You see, Abraham wasn't dead, but there were parts of him, of his body, dead. Sarah wasn't dead, but there were parts of her dead. And because of what was dead in Abraham, dead in Sarah, they couldn't have any child. But God quickness the dead. And call it those things which be not as though they were. And then in verse 18, he said, Who against hope believes in hope? You see, when things are hopeless, when it appears, you, somebody can't make it, he's so sick, and we don't think he'll get through this. And he's so down, we don't think he'll ever come up. It says, Who against hope believes in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And then we're told in verse 19, in verse 19, it says, Some bring. And be not weak in faith. That means he believed in the Lord. He kept on believing in the Lord. And his faith was firm in the Lord. His faith was great in the Lord. His faith was unshakable. When our faith remains unshakable and was steadfast and we believe in the Lord beyond what we feel in our body, beyond what we think in our thoughts and beyond what people say. They look at you, they say, okay, madam, are you sick? And they say, uh, man, are you sick? And then they say, the, the way it shows in your body, on your face, and it's like you are very, very sick. For how long have you been sick? Don't think about that. And be not weak in faith. He considered not somebody now dead. Is somebody now dead? You understand? He wasn't dead. He wasn't in the grave. There was still life. He still had hope in the Lord. But it appeared his body, the vital part of his body, now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. And then it says in verse 20, in verse 20 it says, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. You understand stagger? When a man is drunk and he's lost his senses, he's lost his balance, he's lost everything, and he's here and there, and he doesn't know where he's standing, what he's doing, what's the future, and doesn't know anything. The man begins to stagger. There are people that stagger like that. The problems of life, the pressure of life, and the pain in life brings staggering onto them. But we're told, Abraham, and we are the children of Abraham by faith. He says, he staggered not at the promise of God through belief, but he was strong in faith. And if it could happen to Abraham, it will happen to you. The same, he wasn't like that before. When he said, let Ishmael live, the faith was not strong then, but then he turned around and he had strong faith, maybe in the past. Your faith was not that strong, but now something is happening to your faith tonight. And you will yet glorify the Lord, we're told, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, it says, I'm being fully persuaded. That is it. Am I persuaded that the God who created the whole universe can recreate my body? Yes, I believe. Am I persuaded that God who did all these things and put the stars in place and divided the Red Sea and divided the River Jordan and made Jericho walls to fall without shooting an arrow? I, I, am I fully persuaded that the Lord God of heaven that brought Jesus from uh, through uh, Mary as uh, with a virgin but I am not persuaded that he who can do all that will do everything in my life. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And yes, you are. Be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Performance in your life tonight. 
performance in every life tonight on radio is coming to you over the television is coming to you online is coming to you i see your life turning around to a better side and i see all those negative things all those things of darkness everything vanishing away because what he had promised he was able also to perform what has he promised that we know that today will be performed in your life uh, look at number one here what he has promised that he is able also to perform number one is transforming salvation transforming salvation that is when god takes hold of your life and he gives you salvation which he will give tonight if he has not given already and that salvation transforms every area of your life that people will say ah look at this no it's not him and then you say yes it's me what happened to you the promise of god was performed in my life and he gave me transforming salvation look at number two number two he gives us trustworthy security you've been living your life in fear because of the community in which you live and because of the people and the things around you and because of the things you hear that dazzle your mind and dazzle your soul and you don't know how am i going to live from here from here to, until tomorrow he gives us trustworthy security not only for one day or for one week or for one month or for one year he even extends some our lives like he did for Ezekiah. Your life will be secured in every way, every form in Jesus' name. What promises do we have that we know? He has given this promise and he is able and he is able to perform that which he has promised. Number three, the trustable scripture. Trustable scripture. What do I mean by that? He gives us the scripture and that scripture is trustable trustable in the sense that he can do it like he gives the promise today he fulfills tomorrow or he gives the promise today he fulfills this instantly i will come and heal him no you don't need to come speak the word only and my servant shall be healed trustable word trustable scripture and it was done he cursed the tree the barren tree and then the following day they saw that fulfilled it is what we call the trust table of scripture and then he gives the word he said abraham i will visit you and the following year abraham sarah had isaac for the present time or for, or for tomorrow or for the next year or for decades or for centuries he said it's a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name emmanuel that took some hundreds of years because of the purpose of god and the timing of god the point is whether it is what he will do today what he will do tomorrow what he will do next year whatever when it's appropriate according to promise we have the trustable scripture and what he promised promises healing salvation and health and and financial breakthrough the scripture everything that is promised trustable look at number four number four is transparent sanctification transparent sanctification uh, you know when we talk of sanctification is for everyone he saves us he brings us into his family and he gives us uh, the the nature of god himself here is a human being and the lord transferred to him the very nature of god and it's transparent it's what the angels can see through it's what christ himself can see through and say yes that the work of my hand and it will give every one of us in jesus name. look at verse number five number five is totally trampled sicknesses what do i mean by that it says we have satan trampled under 
our feet. All his works trampled under our feet. And all his sicknesses trampled under our feet. And it doesn't matter the name, the nature, and how long standing that disease might have been. We have the promise that will trample under our feet. Sickness, Satan, calamity, suffering, everything. And you can be totally free today. Everything totally completely without any stain and without any grain of that work of the devil the remaining in you. That's why Christ came for this purpose. Jesus Christ was manifested that he might destroy all the works of the devil. Look at number six of the promises. This is timely, timely supernatural strength. Timely supernatural strength. Have you noticed uh, what happened in life of, uh, of uh, Samson? He had all the power that all the armies of the Philistines, they couldn't stand before him. If he did it for him, uh, can't he do it for me and for you? His was physical strength. We need strength in our mind and strength in our soul and strength in our inner man that our inner man becomes so strong that nothing could, de could defeat us. Look at uh, David coming. Uh, he was not only strong in the body, he was not only strong having sharp eyesight to look at Goliath. You know, some people will say Goliath is so big, uh, you can't uh, you can't defeat him. David said it the other way. He said uh, you know, this is the target. Goliath is so big, you can't miss him. He knew that the Lord will direct that stone and to get to the right point and defeat the greatest enemy of the children of Israel. We have that kind of strength from the Lord, supernatural strength from the Lord, timely and timeless. Uh, why, why do we put those two words there? Timely for now. At, at this present time, whatever confronts you, and then timeless because no matter the time, no matter the age, and no matter the dispensation you are living in, it is timely. You get it today in Jesus' name. Look at number seven here. Number seven is transferable scriptural solution. Uh, look at that. Transferable uh, scriptural solution. It gives me solution, but I'm not I'm not a, a kind of a different from who you are. You're a child of God. I'm a child of God. Or maybe you're a sinner and you're intending to be the child of God today. And you said, it's done it for other people. It's going to do it for me. It is transferable. Whatever solutions other people have had and whatever cure other people have had, whatever conversion other people have had, miraculous conversion is transferable. And it's transferred into your life even tonight in Jesus name give me a celebration amen that will bring all these blessings to your life amen I come to point number three now point number three I'm looking at praises that bring marvelous solutions praises that bring marvelous solutions can I tell you something most of us whenever we have any challenge any problem Anything confronting us, especially what we cannot deal with. And we think, is this the end of life? Am I going to go just like this? You know what we do? We cry. Maybe that's not bad, but we sh should do more than crying. We complain. Sometimes that's not appropriate. We're complaining to the wrong people. A person is sick and is complaining to somebody who does not even know any iota of way to, uh, to solve the problem. Why are we doing that? A person has financial problem and is, uh, you know, complaining to the poorest man in town, complaining uh, to, the, to the person who is even bankrupt himself. What's that good doing? Whenever we have any challenge, most of us don't think and most of us don't know that the praise of God, the praise of the glory of God will bring the solution. But I want to tell you, 
Praises are powerful because those praises, they bring marvelous solutions in our lives. Let's come back to our text. We're looking at 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Look at verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that they should Praise, look at that word, underline that word, and make up your mind, that is what I will do from now on. No complaining, no murmuring, no grumbling, no asking question, why is this and why is that? Why is why? No, no questions anymore. It says when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should Praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And then it says, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy, endure it forever. Do I have any problem? What do I do? Praise the Lord for his mercy, endure it forever. Do I have any challenge? Praise the Lord for his mercy, endure it forever. Am I going through deep waters? And I don't understand how deep it is, but I know I'm almost sinking in the deep water. Praise the Lord for his mercy endure it forever. Even this kind of sickness that came and the way I feel, I don't even know the name. And when the doctors mention the name is so big and it's so great, I don't know. Even how to retain that, but I feel the pain. What's my response? Praise the Lord for his mercy endure it forever. The children are about to go to school and I need to pay this fees and there is nothing. Even to eat is a challenge and to pay house rent is a challenge. What do I do? Praise the Lord for his mercy. Endure it forever. I am threatened. And this person threatening said, this one don't have any faith. Believe that, you know, this will happen. This one is real. And we are behind this one. What do I do? Do I fear? Do I tremble? Do I go to hide? Do I keep myself in dungeons? somewhere. What's my response? Praise the Lord for his mercy. Endure it forever and your solution will come. And the triumph will come in your life. And you will praise the Lord and before the blessing comes and then after the blessing comes, you'll keep on praising the Lord. As you look at uh, this uh, third point now, we're talking about confident praise, not a superficial praise. Not if uh, I'm praising the Lord, but I'm fearing my heart. But I really praise the Lord. If the confident praise is by humble, honest, holy saints of God. Now, what am I praising God for? And when do we praise the Lord? That's very important. What am I praising the Lord for? And when is the praise? You see, there are people that can smile and laugh after the storm. What if you came to the point you could praise him before the enemy halts? The enemy is still there, like uh, they told the Jehoshaphat, ah, this one, you will not escape. The, this one is determined. And they gave him testimonies, bad testimonies. We defeated that, we defeated that, we defeated that, and you will become one of them. And then he sets up the people and they were praising the Lord. Number one, praise him before the enemy holds. The enemy will come to an end. The enemy will stop. The enemy will halt. And all this machinery and everything, everything will crumble and be destroyed. But you will conquer and you will conquer every foe, every enemy, every problem in your life in Jesus' name. But number one, praise him before the enemy holds. Number two, number two is to praise him before the walls fall. Anybody can shout, anybody can sing, anybody can praise the Lord. When the walls fall, the wall of demarcation between you and your destiny, the wall of demarcation 
demarcation between you and your success, the wall of your of a demarcation between you and laughter, between you and joy, and between you and the victory in your life. Anybody can shout and praise after the walls are falling, but you know, for our lives and to follow what the children of Israel under the leadership of Joshua did, they praised the Lord, and as they shouted, the walls fell flat. What if they had said, I cannot praise God now, look at what I'm going through, we cannot praise God now, look at the promised land and look at the walls of Jericho between us and that promised land. What if they said that, but no, when Joshua said, shout, they shouted and they praised the Lord before their walls fall. And today, you will praise the Lord. And while you are praising the Lord, all your walls will fall in Jesus' name. Look at number three there. Number three is praise him before the feeling of diseases depart. Praise him before the feeling of diseases depart. You understand that man that came to the Lord and he said my my son is at the point of death and Jesus said go thy son leave it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He said my son leave it. And he was going back home and his servant came to meet him and said he said, your son liveth exactly what Jesus said. And then he said, when did the disease, the infirmity, the fever, when did that leave him? They said, at this hour yesterday, at the point Jesus said so, the man had not seen it, but he believed. And as he believed, then he went home, he went on in the joy of the Lord. The same thing as we are prayed for tonight. And is confirmed by the word of God. And the name of Jesus that cannot fail. You are praising him. When you are going back home. Before the feeling of diseases depart. We are looking at number four here. Number four. Praise him. Believing the spoken word. Praise him. Believing the spoken word. That's what that centurion did. And the centurion said, speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only. The word only. The word only. And my servant shall be healed. And uh, Jesus said, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. And then he said, as you have believed, so be it unto you. You understand that? Not uh, as your enemies decree. No. Not as your uh, foes uh, desire. Never. And not as you know the people around you not that they wish you okay we well, wish you well but you know in their hearts there's another thing but at the spoken word understand in your life from today say amen in your life from today your life will be as a believer the spoken word and as we got back home the servant was totally healed and as we get back home all the members of your body serving you as your servant and they are completely made whole in jesus name look at number five number five praise him before the prison doors open. You remember Paul and Silas? They had done a good work for the Lord. And the good work they have done for the Lord was misinterpreted, misplaced, misconstrued by uh, the people that were masters of that lady. Because they had said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And the devil came out. They were angry. And then they took them and put them in the prison. They beat them. And then at midnight, the midnight of sorrow, the midnight when everybody was asleep, but they were awake, the midnight when it appears everything is upside down for you and for me, the midnight when it appears, are we going to go through life like this? Instead of complaining, once again I remind you, don't complain instead of criticizing instead of saying, God, where are you? Where are you? The people that are asking God such a question and what, I don't know what to use for that kind of question, 
Jesus, God had been for more than eternity. He was at the point of creation. Then he was with Israel. He did all these mighty things and was saying, Where is God? God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. Our problems will never shift God from the throne. They were at the midnight of their problem. And then what did they do? They prayed and they sang praises unto the Lord. They were sitting in prison. They prayed and sang praises unto the Lord. And it was midnight. It was dark. Not even the light of a candle. But then uh, they sang and gave praises unto the Lord. And the doors were unlocked. But they sang and gave praises unto the Lord. And while they were praising the Lord, that's our secret. While they were praising the Lord, the foundation of the prison shook. The foundation of a prison was shake in Jesus' name. All the doors were open. The windows were open. And their shackles and their chains, everything totally loose. They praised the Lord before the prison doors opened. That's the lesson we're learning before. Before the miracle. Before the signs and the wonders. Before the healing. Before the fig tree dried up. We praise the Lord. Look at number six there. Number six. Praise him before the leprosy appears cleansed. These ten lepers came to the Lord. And they said, they said Lord have mercy on us. They wanted cleansing. They wanted total uh, healing. And Jesus just said go show yourself to the priest. They didn't say is that all? No prayer, no touch, no shaking, no pouring, whatever on us, no anointing us. He just said, go show yourself to the priest. And he went joyfully. They were not disappointed. They were not complaining. If we can turn our faith around and understand that when God says it, it is done. And so we go on. We are alive and we are lively. We are happy. We are joyful. And we know the problem is so it says while they were going, all the ten of them Without exception, they were totally cleansed. And one man there is Samaritan. He was so excited. And then he ran by. All the others were going. You know, sometimes you have to have a mind of your own. A decision of your own. Look at that nine. They were going. And he came back unto the Lord. And we praises unto the Lord. And Jesus said, were well, there not ten claims where are the other nine? Except this Samaritan. He said, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Remember, he was already cleansed from leprosy. But now, it's, uh, Jesus said, because of the praise. Because of glorifying the Lord. He said, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. Any other sin that needs to be touched and transformed and healed. And uh, totally delivered from your faith has made you whole. Look at number seven. In number seven, presume uh, before seeing uh, the tree dried up. The tree dried up. There are fruitless trees. There are unprofitable trees. There are, you know, trees that just ruin and wreck our lives. And then Jesus said, no man eat fruit of that tree forever. And then he looked away. It's like, uh, you know, disciples were saying, uh-uh. Did anything happen? Did anything happen? The second day they came and they saw the tree from the root had totally dried up. We praise him. We know that whatever he says is performed. And whatever he says in your life tonight, and whatever he decrees in your life tonight, everything is done. Amen. Amen, it is done. But we we'll praise him before seeing the tree dried up. Jehoshaphat set up the singers and they praised the holiness of the Lord and the name of the Lord. And they praised him for the answer that they had not seen. And as we come today and uh, we're praising the Lord, first of all, we must give our life to the Lord. And we we'll just say, the God who can do all this, 
He is going to be my savior. He is going to be my shepherd. He is going to be my security. He is going to be my fortress. He is going to be my healer. He is going to be my deliverer. He is going to be all in all for me. And therefore, I give everything of my heart, of my soul, of my life. I give unto him. Then we come into the family. And then we make a request before the Lord for healing for breakthrough, for deliverance, for anything, for everything. And when we hear the final amen, then we begin to praise the Lord and good things will happen in every life in Jesus' name. Eyes bowed and eyes closed. We're going to call upon the Lord now. You want to give your life to the Lord that this great God, this mighty God, and this God that works in possibilities in every life, that he will become your father. He'll become your God. He'll become your Redeemer. And at the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ will avail for you. Where are you there? Raise up your hand. The Lord is going to do it. And where are you there? Whether you're on television or you're on the radio, you're online, anywhere you are. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is your time. Your moment of salvation. Your moment of forgiveness. Your moment of freedom. Freedom, your moment of coming into the book of life. Raise up that hand. Please stand up, stand up wherever you are. On the right hand side, left hand side, at the back there, over there, everywhere, anywhere you are, over the television, over the radio, online. This is the moment of salvation and forgiveness and freedom for you. Thank you. God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. Please uh, keep on standing and let that, let that hand, uh, you know, be uh, kept up as I pray with you now. Turn away from your sin, turn away from your evil, turn away uh, from everything that is uh, not of God in your life and say, Lord, here am I. I give myself completely unto you. We're praying together now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for what you've done already. I thank you for all these that have uh, raised up their hands and they're giving their lives unto you unreservedly and they're going to love you now with all their heart all their soul all their mind and they believe in you that what you have said that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved that you will fulfill it for every life for every boy every girl every man every woman everyone everywhere grant them your forgiveness and your salvation right now in jesus name Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. I know it is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody shout, Amen. Now, the, our, our counselors will go around now and they give you the sleeves to feel and uh, say the correct thing, do the correct thing there. And the Lord himself has written your name in the book of life. But we need to do this so that we can follow up on you, new members of the family of God. And the joy of salvation will continue in your life in Jesus' name. We ask our uh, coordinating uh, overseer there to please take over. And uh, in every family you will see all all those things, uh, the information on the screen there, and the Lord confirm the salvation in your life in Jesus. Let's do this quickly, and then I'll come back uh, to pray for you that all your challenges and all the problems, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Congratulations for those that have just given their lives to Christ. You stood up, keep standing now. And our orchards, we move quickly to them, give them the sleep to feel, and please feel it correctly because it will enable us to be of further assistance and help to you. You are standing up. Can I see your hand up? Those who are standing up. Can you wave your hand, please? Thank you. Keep standing, please. Keep standing. All shares, please quickly get to them now and uh, give them a sleep to feel. And please, preferably, we want you to fill them in capital letters, very legibly. 
your correct name, your address, please do that now. Our counselors are around you. Please keep standing until you are attended to. If you have not been attended to, keep standing. They will come around you and give you, you know, the sleep to feel. They will also give you a special package from the covenant, our Father in the Lord. Please do that. God bless you mightily. For those online, if you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link, gckhq.org slash connect. So we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. The radio and television's audience, you also can see the number, the phone number, right before you on your screen there. You can get in touch with us on WhatsApp. The number is plus 234-915-444-9263. Plus 234-91-5444-9263. Nine two six three, And I want to inform you that there will be a special meeting called the Believer's uh, Class for all those who gave their life to Jesus during this program. One hour before the commencement of the crusade. That means it's starting from tomorrow and Tuesday. Don't forget one hour before the crusade. That means that you have to be here by 4 o'clock. If the crusade is starting by 5, we expect you here by 4 o'clock tomorrow for the, the believer's class. There will be special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their life to Christ on Sunday, that is to, uh, the 4th of June, coming Sunday, 2023. More details about these will be sent to you. Our pastor, our Father in the Lord, will be highly delighted to have you join this special banquet. There will also be a special physical banquet for those who gave their lives to Christ from all physical locations in your group your region, your state, and nations. On Saturday, on I mean Sunday, 4th June, 2023, details also will be communicated to you. If you just receive your miracle, please share your testimony with us via the WhatsApp number being displayed or Testimony link on the screen. You can also record a video of your testimony and share with us via WhatsApp and Telegraph. Please, let's do that. Ushers, have you attended to them? If you have not received your own um, sleep and package, you can wave your hand here so that we can see you and you can be promptly attended to. A Father in the Lord will be shortly coming up to pray for you. <laughs> the devil is in trouble. I say the devil is in trouble because he's praying with anointing that cannot be challenged by any power either on earth under the earth, anywhere they are found, the power of God, the anointing of God will destroy all the works of the devil. 
You believe each other louder. Amen. amen. Loud, a, an amen that will embarrass the devil. Amen. amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. It's time now to get a miracle. You will get your miracle. You will get your healing. Whatever it is you are asking the Lord for, the Lord will do it and the praises of the Lord will be in your mouth in Jesus. Let's rise up. Let's rise up. And then present that problem to the Lord and in your word, according to his spoken word, his written word, that thing will be done in your life in Jesus name. Let's pray now. Lay your hand where you have the challenge and raise up the other hand and the power of the Lord will take everything that should not be in your life, in your body, in your family will take everything away. Father in the mighty name of Jesus I thank you. We thank you for the examples you've shown us in scripture that as we ask you you always answer and you answer immediately you answer speedily you answer confidently and we know that as we decree and as we pray that you will grant the answer i pray for everyone whatever disease whatever sickness whatever financial constraint and whatever the pressure the pain whatever may be the problem in your mighty way in your good way take everything away in jesus name i pray that the healing for every form of disease having names or not having names Lord I pray take all that disease away heal your people in Jesus name everyone there over the radio everyone there over the television everyone there wherever they are any part of the world your power cuts across everywhere everyone fulfill your promise in Jesus name everything they have asked you everything they have desired of you everything they have requested of you in their heart and they have said oh lord do this in your faithfulness do everything in jesus name heal the sick deliver the oppressed cancel all those works of the devil and fulfill your will your word in every life in jesus name i thank you lord because i know that you have answered and everyone will see the glory of god everyone will praise the lord for speedy answer that you have given every one of us today in Jesus name Lord put testimony in every mouth thank you Lord because I know you have answered in Jesus name I pray amen it is done it is done. remember no complaint remember no memory remember you are praising the Lord now even before you see anything the Lord has done it and that final amen it's done and whatever you couldn't do before you couldn't bend before you couldn't see before you couldn't hear before you couldn't uh, walk or run or whatever you can do it now because the lord himself has touched you and healed you and delivered you he has answered your prayer praise the lord amen now i will say i will take over and uh, we'll hear testimonies of what the lord has done today